Hello everyone, this is Sayyid Sagir Ahmad. I welcome you to our YouTube channel. In this video, Antihypertensives Part 1, I am going to cover various topics such as definition of hypertension, differences between systolic and diastolic blood pressure, categories of blood pressure, types of hypertension, causes of hypertension, lifestyle changes to reduce hypertension, classification of antihypertensive drugs, regulation of blood pressure by renin angiotensin system and finally mechanism of action of AC inhibitors. So let's get started. Before entering into antihypertensive drugs, let us see the background of hypertension first so that we can understand the mechanism of action of antihypertensive drugs very clearly. So now what is hypertension? Hypertension is an elevation of systolic and diastolic blood pressure above normal that is above 140 by 90 millimeter mercury. What is 140 and what is 90 here? The above value 140 is a systolic blood pressure and the lower value 90 is a diastolic blood pressure. Now the question is why systolic blood pressure is higher than diastolic blood pressure. To understand this, let us see the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure is the maximum pressure in the arteries due to the contraction of the heart. In this case, the ventricles are contracting. During the contraction of ventricles, the blood which is present in the ventricles are pumped to the respective arteries. Say suppose the blood which is present in the left ventricle is pushed into the aorta, the largest artery and the force of blood flow in the aorta is higher. Hence, blood pressure is maximum. That is why the value of systolic blood pressure is higher. Systole is nothing but contraction. Diastolic blood pressure is the minimum pressure in the arteries due to the relaxation of the heart. In this case, ventricles are relaxing. As ventricles are relaxing, they are not pumping the blood into their arteries. Hence, the pressure in the arteries is minimum. That is why the value of diastolic blood pressure is less. Here, diastole means relaxation. Blood pressure is categorized into normal, prehypertension, hypertension stage 1 and hypertension stage 2. Blood pressure is said to be normal when the systolic blood pressure is less than 120 millimeter mercury and diastolic blood pressure is less than 80 millimeter mercury. In case of prehypertension, the systolic blood pressure is ranging between 120 to 139 millimeter mercury and diastolic blood pressure is ranging between 80 to 89 millimeter mercury. In hypertension stage 1, systolic blood pressure is ranging between 140 to 159 millimeter mercury and diastolic blood pressure between 90 to 99 millimeter mercury. Stage 2, systolic blood pressure is greater than 160 and diastolic blood pressure is greater than 100 millimeter mercury. Hypertension is classified into primary and secondary hypertension. The prevalence of primary hypertension is 90 to 95% and the cause is unknown. And the prevalence of secondary hypertension is 5 to 10% and the cause is known. This might be due to the presence of some other diseases. Among all hypertensive patients, about 90 to 95% of the patients may have primary hypertension and only 5 to 10% patients we can see a secondary hypertension. Let us see the causes of secondary hypertension. 
whenever there is a kidney disease or any other disease that damages kidney tissue in that case the flow of blood towards the kidney is reduced once the flow of blood towards the kidney is reduced there are some specialized cells present in the kidneys that secrete renin and renin is transported to the blood where series of changes will be taking place that leads to the formation of angiotensin 2 this angiotensin 2 causes vasoconstriction vasoconstriction is nothing but the narrowing of blood vessels where blood vessels are getting constricted that leads to increase in blood pressure the concept of renin angiotensin system will be discussed in detail later this is the one cause let us see the another cause you know adrenal gland located above the kidney adrenal glands are divided into two parts the outermost part is adrenal cortex and the innermost part of adrenal gland is adrenal medulla adrenal cortex secrete a hormone called as aldosterone and adrenal medulla secrete noradrenaline both aldosterone and noradrenaline regulate blood pressure whenever there is a tumor to the adrenal cortex at that time there is abnormal increase in the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex due to this sodium and water reabsorption is increased from the kidney now what do you mean by sodium and water reabsorption say suppose sodium and water enters into the kidney for elimination by filtering through the nephron but within the nephron they are not eliminating rather than that they are transporting back to the blood so the process of transportation of substances back to the blood is called as reabsorption as sodium and waters are transported back to the blood plasma volume increases also sodium causes vasoconstriction both these effect may rises blood pressure again okay, case of tumor of adrenal medulla there is increased release of noradrenaline that causes vasoconstriction vasoconstriction leads to increase vascular resistance finally it rises blood pressure so these are the certain causes of secondary hypertension lifestyle changes to reduce hypertension blood pressure can be managed and hypertension can be reduced by adhering to the following activities number 1 regular exercise and stress management exercise like walking jogging cycling swimming and dancing may make our heart strong and a strong heart pump sufficient blood with minimum effort and decreases pressure on the arteries hence reduces blood pressure stress management can also be achieved by regular meditation or yoga next point by reducing the intake of sodium as we know very well sodium ion causes vasoconstriction and increases blood pressure by reducing the intake of sodium we can reduce blood pressure next excessive alcohol consumption may also increases blood pressure by limiting its consumption may really help to reduce hypertension next point as we know oily and fatty food causes coronary artery disease where there is a deposition of fat in the blood vessels that make the blood vessels narrow and increases blood pressure by avoiding 
excessive consumption of oily and fatty food we can reduce blood pressure finally cigarette contain nicotine and nicotine is act as adrenergic receptor that stimulate the release of catecholamines and increases blood pressure avoiding smoking really helps to reduce hypertension classification of anti hypertensive drugs based on the severity and cause of hypertension different categories of drugs can be used to treat hypertension in that the first category of anti hypertensive drugs is renin angiotensin system inhibitors in this ac inhibitors example is captopril angiotensin antagonist losartan direct renin inhibitor aliskiren second category diuretics in that thiazides hydrochlorothiazide high ceiling diuretic furosemide potassium sparing diuretic spironolactone next category sympathetic inhibitors in that beta adrenergic blockers propranolol beta and alpha adrenergic blockers labetalol only alpha adrenergic blockers prazosin and central sympatholytics like clonidin and methyl dopa calcium channel blockers virapamil deltiazem and nifedipine and finally vasodilators in that arteriolar dilator example is hydralazine arteriolar and venodilators example is sodium nitroprusside let us talk about the first category of anti hypertensive drugs that is renin angiotensin system inhibitors before that let us understand the concept of renin angiotensin system where we will understand how blood pressure increases in this system so that we will get a very clear picture how anti hypertensive drugs reduces blood pressure by inhibiting this system renin angiotensin system is an automatic system in our body that regulate blood pressure whenever blood pressure decreases or flow of blood towards the kidney is reduced at that time the specialized cells which are present within the kidney called as juxtaglomerular cells releases a hormone called as renin and this renin is transported to the blood where renin converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 so now what is angiotensinogen angiotensinogen is a protein which is synthesized in the liver and circulated in the blood later angiotensin converting enzyme convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 this angiotensin 2 is the real culprit who increases blood pressure so here angiotensin 2 bind to angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor that may leads to vasoconstriction where blood vessels are getting constricted they become narrow that may leads to increase in blood pressure reabsorption of sodium and water is increased here water and sodium enters into the nephron for elimination as a urine but rather than eliminating this sodium and water is transported back to the blood the process of transportation of substances back to the blood is called as reabsorption once sodium and water transported back to the blood it increases plasma volume and increases blood pressure even sodium is an excitatory ion once the concentration of sodium is increased in the blood this causes vasoconstriction which in turn increases blood pressure finally aldosterone is secreted from the adrenal cortex adrenal cortex is located above each kidney 
increase secretion of aldosterone may leads to increased sodium and water reabsorption that increases plasma volume and overall blood pressure increases now look at this process and think is it possible to reduce blood pressure by altering this process can we treat hypertension by altering renin angiotensin system yes let us see one by one number one renin can be inhibited by administering direct renin inhibitors if renin is inhibited then there is no formation of angiotensin 1 if the formation of angiotensin 1 is blocked then there is no further processes and no increase in blood pressure number two angiotensin converting enzyme can be inhibited by administering ac inhibitors inhibition of angiotensin converting enzyme may leads to prevention of the formation of angiotensin 2 if angiotensin 2 is not formed no further mechanisms and blood pressure never increase number three by administering 81 receptor antagonist we can block 81 receptors if 81 receptors are blocked then angiotensin 2 is unable to bind to 81 receptors then no increase in blood pressure then vasoconstriction can be inhibited it can be reduced by administering vasodilators vasodilators are the agents which relaxes vascular smooth muscles and decreases blood pressure sodium and water reabsorption can be decreased by administering or by giving diuretics diuretics are the agents which increases elimination of sodium and water if elimination of sodium and water is increased then plasma volume is decreased finally blood pressure is reduced a release of aldosterone can be inhibited can be reduced by giving aldosterone antagonist aldosterone antagonist inhibit or decreases the release of aldosterone from adrenal cortex that leads to decrease blood pressure so these are the various processes through which blood pressure pressure can be reduced so let us see the first subcategory of renin angiotensin system inhibitor that is ace inhibitor example is captopril captopril inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme inhibition of angiotensin converting enzyme may leads to inhibition of angiotensin 2 if angiotensin 2 is inhibited then there is a decrease vasoconstriction decrease sodium and water reabsorption decrease aldosterone secretion reduce plasma volume and overall effect leads to decrease blood pressure so this is the first subcategory of drug which can be used to treat hypertension or to reduce blood pressure